What is the importance of self-awareness and how do you get it? Today in our halftime talk, we're gonna talk about self-awareness and how it impacts your success. Hi, I'm Coach Conley Oliver with Conley Sports. Thanks for watching our video today. Subscribe to our channel to get all the latest breakdown videos and information that will help you enhance your game. Today we're talking about self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to be aware of you. Like what are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your mind? How do you look? How do you compare to other people? I have to be aware to play the game of basketball. There's nine other people on the court. I need to know what is happening all the time. You know, I, I always prided myself on being aware, being aware of who I am as a basketball player. You know, I had friends telling me that I was a really good basketball player growing up, but yet guys were still in front of me, and I knew that. I didn't take it for granted that, no, nah, it must be the coaches, it must be somebody else. I knew I could compare that guy with me, I could compare Michael Jordan with myself, and that's the thing. Like, everybody wanted to be like Mike, but could I really be Mike? Uh, the reality was no, I couldn't be John Stockton. I couldn't be these guys growing up. I was very fortunate to grow up in an environment where you could see and be self-aware compared to the people you play against. Michael Jordan was a great basketball player, but he would, there was no way I could ever compare myself to him. You know, We all wanted to be him, but we couldn't compare. I had to be the best of me. And how did I find out where I was and how I could get to the next level? Uh, and that was the question I had to ask myself every day. I worked on the, my game. I always had guys around me that I could compare myself with and challenge myself to know where I stood. Um, you know, I think it's the one disadvantage of club basketball today. You know, growing up, I had open gym, and open gym was the best place to be because I had older guys, younger guys. You know, we had guys that were at my level or guys I played with in high school, and I would learn so much because. You know, the thing about Open Gym was I could sit there and compare. Today, you don't have that. Back then, I had 40-year-olds that could beat me up. You know, I had younger guys that were good. I had younger guys that weren't as good as me. So I could really see the difference in talent all the time, and I knew where I fit in there. Today's game is so much different, you know. Like, we don't have that. Adults don't play with kids very often. You know, unless it's your parent, you're not going out and playing with everybody. You're playing AAU ball at your age level 90% of the time. You're only playing against kids in your area unless you're playing high level AAU and then you're traveling far for practices or tournaments and maybe you get that exposure. It is so challenging for everybody today. I mean, you have a trainer, you have a coach, you might have a club coach, you have a parent. Um, we're not allowed the freedom that I did to get my butt kicked and not get picked on a team trying to win games on a Saturday morning and not leave the court because there's 30 people waiting. That doesn't happen today. So you have to figure out how to be aware. You have to know, am I as good as that guy? And you gotta be able to make the difference. Nobody else is gonna be able to be as real as you can be with yourself. So have that kind of accountability. Videotape yourself, videotape your competitor, or watch film on him, and see how you guys compare. Are your handles the same? Is your jump shot the same? Can you jump as high? Can you play defense as well? That's how you get better today, um, and you have to, because let's be honest, your trainer is not being honest with you. You're paying him. He might be great. I feel like I'm a great trainer. I am trying to, one, give you tons of confidence, two, trying to make you the best player that I can make you. I might not train that other kid, and that kid might be better than you, but I want you to keep getting better. And that's my goal, that's my only goal. So you might need to be able to figure that out on your own as you build the confidence with your trainer. And trainers aren't bad, I don't have a problem with trainers. I just know the work comes from you. You have to make sure that you're getting better and you're better than the competition. If you, if you take the time to really analyze where you're at and then really start progressing with your goals, you'll get really far. And you know, that's how you fix it. You know, you have to be the accountable one. It's not up to your parents, it's not up to, to your trainers, it's not up to the coaches. You know, the coaches got a team to run. I mean, every coach, believe me, I'm a coach, we would love to treat each kid like a special kid. I got 12 kids, I got eight, I got five that are starters. I am trying to win basketball games. But when I'm training, I'm trying to make you the best kid possible. Those are two different roles and two different goals. 
So again, how, how can we keep getting better? And that's the key. I don't want to stay where I'm at and I need comparison. So you should always play against, you know, somebody that's not as good as you, somebody that's equal to you, and then somebody that can kill you. If you can have those three people and compete against them all the time, um, I guarantee if you're the best player in your program, you're not getting pushed hard enough. You need to go outside that and find people that are better than you, that can step up and beat you and beat you and beat you until you can get there. Uh, my, my favorite story to tell is I, I was playing ping pong as a kid. I had two friends that were way better than me. And so every day they would come over to my house and play ping pong. And they started because they were better than me, they would play left-handed. And they would play and they would beat me and they would beat me. And pretty soon I finally got good enough to beat them with you know their left hand. So then they switched. And then they beat me and skunk me and kill me. And, and then eventually I started winning points and then I would win games. And then it became competitive. And then I was winning and then they were mad. And then we were competitive again. So you can't challenge yourself by not being better than other people. You know, 101 is probably the best test we have today um, since we don't play a lot of pickup games the way we used to. So challenge yourself every day, be self-aware and see that challenge, right? Beat the guy you're supposed to beat by 100. Be competitive with the guy you're right with and beat him. And then get your butt kicked by people better than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, so you can learn to adapt your game to a higher level. That's how success works. That's how being self-aware works. And so, you know, lastly, just the recruiting process. Self-awareness is key to the recruiting process. It's all on you. Know if you're a D1 player or not. The one thing I always like to say is, if the D1s aren't contacting you, you're probably not a D1 player. They go out and recruit and recruit and recruit. Now, it doesn't mean you can't find a spot on a D1 team, but it takes a lot of work. You're going to have to find the right team at the right time, and the role is going to be tougher. Know what it takes at the D1 level to play that. It's way more than the D2 level or the D3 level. If you love this game, find the perfect fit for you. And the only way you can do that is to know who you are, know what you're about, be self-aware, and hold yourself accountable so you can achieve the goals that you want. So that's it. Thanks for watching our halftime talk today. I'm Coach Conley. Again, subscribe to our channel. Leave me comments. I want to hear from you. I want to help you enhance your game and make you the best player you can be. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.